Hey everyone, in our previous video, we discussed the dangers of electricity towards humans when exceeding certain voltage and current thresholds. But an important question remains, how can we protect ourselves and lower the risk of electrocution? Today we're diving into the protective devices, specifically the circuit breaker and the residual current device, which protect us against electrical hazards. If you enjoy the content, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on the notification bell so you never miss any update. Let's kick things off with circuit breakers. In our electrical system, there are numerous types of circuit breaker being used widely, such as the vacuum type, air type, molded K circuit breaker, and miniature circuit breaker. But for today's discussion, we'll focus on the miniature circuit breaker, or MCB that is commonly fixed in the electrical distribution board of our homes. MCBs are designed to break a circuit upon detecting the current exceeding a threshold limit, usually due to overloading or short circuit. They come in various current ratings, typically ranging from 6 amps to 100 amps. Picture this, you have got a 63 amps MCB installed. If the current flowing through this MCB consistently exceeds 63 amps, it will trip, breaking the circuit, and safeguarding connected devices from damage or potential fire hazards. MCBs operate through two primary mechanisms, thermal and magnetic tripping. First, we have the thermal part that is designed to protect against overloading condition. Inside, there's a strip made of two different metals called a bimetallic strip. When overloading occurs, the current gets slightly higher than the rated current of circuit breaker. This causes the bimetallic strip to heat up and bend, until a point it hits a bar called the trip bar. This action releases a latch, causing the circuit breaker to trip and cut off the electricity, keeping everything safe. Next, there's the magnetic part, specifically designed to handle short circuits, where the current spikes much higher than overloading conditions. This part has a coil typically made of copper windings and serves as an electromagnet. When electricity flows through it, the coil becomes magnetized. The stronger the current, the greater the electromagnetic force. If there's a sudden massive surge of electric current, such as during a short circuit, the electromagnetic force is strong enough to attract a spool connected to the trip bar. The latch is released, triggering the circuit breaker to trip and immediately cut off the power supply. Furthermore, to understand how quickly a MCB reacts, we need to look at its time versus current tripping curve. This curve reveals that the tripping time of circuit breaker depends on the amount of current flowing through it. Generally, the curve comprises two sections, the thermal tripping section, represented by a curved portion, and the electromagnetic section, represented by a vertical line. The thermal tripping section responds relatively slow due to the gradual heating of the bimetallic strip, and it takes longer time to trip. However, when the current is extremely high, such as during a short circuit, Electromagnetic tripping occurs almost immediately, typically within 40 milliseconds. There are various types of MCBs. These types include Z, B, C, K, and D, arranged from most sensitive to least sensitive. Type Z MCBs are the most sensitive. The magnetic tripping will be activated when the current exceeds two to three times of the rated value. They are ideal for safeguarding electronic devices against overcurrent. Type B MCBs are commonly used in residential houses and small offices. The magnetic trip is set at 3 to 5 times the rated current. On the other hand, Type C, K, and D MCBs are designed for magnetic tripping at higher multiples of current. They are suitable for applications with higher inrush currents, such as motors, to prevent unnecessary tripping during equipment startup, while also protecting equipment against large short-circuit currents. Moving forward, let's explore how to properly size a circuit breaker for overcurrent protection. Understanding the circuit's details, including the load current and short circuit current, is crucial. Firstly, the circuit breaker must handle the load current without tripping. For example, if the rated current of a water heater is 13 amps. In this case, we can select a circuit breaker with a current rating greater than 13 amps. Therefore, opting for a 16-amp circuit breaker, which is the next standard size above 10 amps, would be appropriate. Moreover, circuit breakers have a short circuit rating, assuming 10 kiloamps in this example. This rating indicates this maximum current that the circuit breaker can safely interrupt. If the short circuit current exceeds this 10 kiloamps value, there's a risk that the circuit breaker may fail to operate, 
or even explode due to the unbearable strong electromagnetic force. Therefore, when selecting a circuit breaker, it's important to ensure the maximum current flow during a short circuit remains lower than the rated short circuit current to maintain safe operation. Now, let's shift our focus to the second protective equipment, the residual current device, or commonly known as RCD. The RCD functions by cutting off the circuit when it detects any deviation in live and neutral current above its sensitivity rating, commonly measured in units of milliamps. The difference in current is also called residual current, which is caused by the leakage current that flows through an alternative path alongside the neutral cable, through the earth, back to the source. But how does the RCD detect this leakage current? In a single-phase system, an RCD typically comprises of a differential current transformer with live and neutral conductor windings encircling it. Additionally, there is a sensing coil. Under normal operating conditions, the current flowing through both the live and neutral conductor wires should be equal. Consequently, the electromagnetic fields generated by both coils are precisely opposite in direction, effectively canceling out each other. The resultant magnetic field is zero and nothing will happen. However, if a leakage occurs, such as when the live wire accidentally makes contact with the frame of equipment, the current may flow through the frame instead of returning through the neutral conductor. In this case, the neutral current will be zero, and it is not equal to the live current. A resultant magnetic field exists and induces a current in the sensing coil. This activates the relay mechanism and the circuit is immediately disconnected, thereby reducing the risk of electrocution. Additionally, RCDs often come equipped with a test button. This enables users to manually assess the device's functionality. Pressing the test button creates a leakage condition and the RCD will trip. It is worth nothing that we can regularly test the RCDs to ensure they are still functioning and reduce the risk of electrical hazards in case of an earth fault. When we encounter an RCD, we typically notice two key ratings, the current carrying capacity in amperes and the sensitivity in milliamperes. For instance, consider a 63 amps, 30 milliamps RCD. The first rating means that, under normal operating conditions, the RCD can safely carry a maximum current of 63 amps without being damaged. Secondly, the sensitivity rating indicates that if the leakage current exceeds 30 milliamps, the RCD will be triggered immediately to cut off the circuit, mitigating potential hazards. RCDs commonly come with different sensitivities, ranging from 10 milliamps up to 300 milliamps. RCDs with a sensitivity of 10 milliamps are highly sensitive and offer the highest level of protection. They are typically installed in locations with high risk of electric shock, such as the water heater in a wet bathroom. In contrary, 30 milliamps RCDs are widely used in areas where there are many people or higher risk of accidental contact with electricity. They are commonly installed for sockets in homes, offices, and public areas. Finally, 100 and 300 milliamps RCDs offer a lower sensitivity and are used in specific electrical installations, where the risk of electric shock due to body contact is relatively low. Next, the tripping time of an RCD is almost instantaneous. According to BS 7671, for a general non-delay type RCDs, if the leakage current is equal to the sensitivity rating of the RCD, the maximum operating time should not exceed 300 milliseconds. For a larger leakage current, such as double or five times the sensitivity, the RCD should trip within 150 milliseconds and 40 milliseconds, respectively. Besides sensitivity, selecting the appropriate type of RCD is crucial to ensure they operate and trip when leakage happens. RCDs come in different types, AC, A, F, or B. They are designed to detect various types of residual current, such as pure 50 Hz AC waveform, 50 Hz AC waveform but containing DC components, smooth DC, and high-frequency AC waveform. In our electrical system, depending on the type of load and also the characteristics of the residual current waveform, an appropriate type of RCD should be installed to ensure it operates and trips safely in response to an earth leakage. Last but not least, we would like to highlight that the use of RCD is mandatory for TT earthing systems or in situations where there is high ground resistance. Additionally, in cases of direct contact of a person with live cables, regardless of TNC or TT earthing system, MCB will not trip. 
In contrast, a properly designed RCD indeed plays a crucial role to trip immediately and reduce the risk of electric shock. However, the severity of electrocution during the short duration before the RCD trips still depends on individual factors and the body's sensitivity to electricity. We'll elaborate on the importance of this in our next video, so please stay tuned. That concludes today's video and we hope you now have a clearer understanding of MCB and RCD. Both of them are necessary in our electrical system to keep us safe. If you find this video helpful, please remember to like, subscribe, turn on the notifications, and share it with others. Thank you for watching.